Hello, everyone. I am Chao Chuan. Today, let's get to know Kinga the Therizinosaurus. Therizinosaurus was a very peculiar dinosaur. The first remains of Therizinosaurus that people found were only its gigantic claws, and they had no idea what it was. At the time, when people restored this animal, the claws were first thought to be the ribs of a giant turtle, and later on, the hand claws of a giant turtle. Anyway, no one thought this animal was a dinosaur, but a sizable turtle or sea turtle. Therefore, the earliest restoration of Therizinosaurus was a turtle, although people later realized that Therizinosaurus was a gigantic dinosaur, knowing that this pair of 70 centimeters large claws belonged to a dinosaur, they could not picture what dinosaur it was. In the past popular science books, generally did not mention this dinosaur. Many books about dinosaurs, even the most comprehensive dinosaur encyclopedia I read as a child, were absent of the Rizinosaurus. Later, people re-studied this dinosaur, and realized that it was a theropod, but people were still confused about its overall appearance for a long time. At first, people analyzed its front claws, and determined it was a theropod, but they couldn't imagine what theropod could possess such a gigantic forelimb. If so, its head must be at least 3 meters long, which is obviously unrealistic. Later, after re-excavation, people had a better understanding of this animal. At the end of the last century, a relatively complete specimen of Therizinosaurus was collected, revealing that this dinosaur might be a plant-eating dinosaur, which is an exception among theropods. We know that theropods were generally large, fierce predators like Tyrannosaurus rex or Giganotosaurus, but Therizinosaurus did the opposite. Later on, because of the discovery of its spine fossil, people gradually realized that its head and neck should be thinner than in the previous speculation. Then, we have this initial appearance like what we see today. In fact, until today, the fossil of Therizinosaurus is still very incomplete, and we can only infer the whole picture of Therizinosaurus from the fragments. The skull of Therizinosaurus has not yet been found, but from its body anatomy, we can deduce that its head was relatively slender and can't be sure what its head was like. Based on a series of subsequent excavations, we have pieced together its general appearance just as this model shows. Therizinosaurus was an amazing animal, it could grow up to 10 meters, or more, almost even with the size of Tyrannosaurus rex. It lived in Mongolia in the late Cretaceous period. Although there was no T. rex, its close relative, Tarbosaurus, lived in this region at the time. These two dinosaurs were of equal size, and they might fight with each other then. The restoration of other body parts of Therizinosaurus generally relies on the fossils of its close relatives. Let us start with what we know about Therizosaurus. The known part is its pelvis, and the details we know best are its forelimbs and pelvis. Its pelvis was a unique structure, which was very thick. If viewed from the top, its pelvis was very broad, from the side, it was round, tall, and thick. The shape of its pelvis was also unusual. We know carnivorous dinosaurs usually had a series of structures, called the sacral vertebrae in their pelvis, and the typical tail extended horizontally along the sacral vertebrae. But Therizinosaurus had a bent angle, where the pelvis connected to the tail, and its tail was upward, which is a little bit bent upward relative to the pelvis. For a long period, scientists were confused about this structure and did not know why. Later, people found out that Therizinosaurus was different from other carnivorous dinosaurs. Unlike other dinosaurs, the trunk of its body was upright. Therefore, if the tail was to be off the ground, it had to be folded like this so that it could be lifted from the ground. This was also very unique to this dinosaur. About the Therizinosaurus foot, there was once a mix-up event. In a well-preserved specimen, people assigned this pelvis and a pair of feet to Therizinosaurus. Later, after careful research, people found this pair of feet did not belong to Therizinosaurus but to an animal called Segnosaurus before Therizinosaurus was accurately studied. Segnosaurus, a close relative of Therizinosaurus, lived around the same time as Therizinosaurus. Due to the relatively close blood relationship between the two, we still take Segnosaurus foot as a reference to restore the skeletal structure of the foot of Therizinosaurus. The feet of this group of animals are vastly different from other theropods. If you look up from below, or down from above, 
you will find that its the toes are on the ground simultaneously. But other carnivorous dinosaurs, such as Allosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex, have their thumbs off the ground. This particular skeletal structure makes its foot look like this. There are many theories about why its feet are like this. One of the more credible ones is that because this dinosaur was relatively large and wide, its uprightness caused its belly to be relatively round. Herbivorous animals feed on many plants daily, requiring large internal organs to digest the somewhat indigestible plant fibers, just like many modern herbivorous animals usually have a large belly. Because of these points, it weighed enormously and needed more toes to bear the loading. In addition, the walking posture of Therizinosaurus is also a subject under study. Many footprints in history are suspected of belonging to Therizinosaurus, including when I was doing a field expedition with scientists in Inner Mongolia. I also saw a suspected footprint of Therizinosaurus. This footprint has show four toes on the ground, no doubt about that. This footprint should be designated to Therizinosaurs, because it can correspond one-to-one -one with the fossils of a complete foot of Segnosaurus, with precisely the four toes stepping on it. But the footprints also show different walking postures. Previously people found the footprints generally represented, like other carnivorous dinosaurs, this animal indeed walked with the toes on the ground, and the heel and metatarsal bones were lifted from the ground, just like this model shows. But in recent years, people found a remarkably well-preserved series of walking traces which fossilized on muddy land. The paper said that it was a Segnosaurus, and these traces show that, at least, some Therizinosaurs would walk with their entire foot on the ground, that is, walking upright, resembling the walking way of a person or a bear. But other footprints did not show this, including the one I saw in Inner Mongolia, the footprints of four toes on the ground suspected to be Therizinosaurus also show that it only walked with toes on the ground, which was different from the series of walking traces, which led to a debate. It is possible that due to its vast size, this animal did sometimes adopt this way of walking, such as when strolling. Of course, it might be caused by different species. Segnosaurus might walk like this, but Therizinosaurus might not. Therefore, this is a process of ongoing study, and we hope more and better foot fossil remains of Therizinosaurus could be discovered to provide more evidence for what its foot looked like. When we made this Therizinosaurus model, we adopted a relatively traditional theory and reconstructed the walking posture based on other previously collected footprints. Therizinosaurus is featured by its gigantic claws, which were shaped like a sickle. First of all, the claws were relatively curved, and they were very flat. The fossil extrusion might partially cause it, but not the whole reason, because the posterior phalanx preserved the intact look when alive. Therefore, we can speculate that the claws of the Rosinosaurus itself were sickle-shaped. From the top, it looked very narrow. From the side, their roots were very wide and sturdy. There was a blood groove near the root. The so-called blood groove is used to accommodate the blood vessels. Generally, the roots will be swollen like this. Such claws must have thick pads on the fingers, as this model shows. The role of the claws is also debated. Intuitively, this animal would probably use the claws for defense. Today, many animals with claws use their front claws to defend or attack. For example, the commonly seen cats use their claws to scratch people. Therizinosaurus likely did the same, but recent research suggests that Therizinosaurus claws may have had other functions as well. Some studies by the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology in the last few years believe that there were some older, possibly the world's first grasses on the recipes of Therizinosaurus, which were found in some dental calculus or other traces of Therizinosaurus. If the Rosinosaurus ate this grass, it would not be like the previous speculation that as a tall animal, it only stood up and ate stuff from trees. If it ate things on the ground, it would be challenging for this animal to lower its head. Although it had a long neck, it took a lot of energy to do so. Therefore, some scientists believe it would use its claws to hook up some low plants and feed them into its mouth. For example, to reach a relatively long grass, it would hook up the roots with its claws and deliver the tip of the plants to its mouth. Its claws might have a function like this. Of course, this does not mean it would fight with its claws. It would be a pity if such giant claws were not used for fighting. 
Its appearance is difficult to compare with those of any modern animal. Modern animals have large claws, such as sloths, which are relatively small and like hanging on trees. An animal as large and 10 meters long as the Therizinosaurus, weighing nearly 10 tons, obviously cannot hang on a tree. This is not enough for reference. Speaking of its upright posture I've mentioned just now, not only Therizinosaurus fossils show this. Fossils of another dinosaur, Sashuosaurus, found in China, also present the same skeletal posture. So the late Therizinosaurs might all have such a structure, which is a typical feature. No skull remains of Therizinosaurus have been discovered, only tiny, fragmentary clues for its head. So what its head looked like is unknown. We can only infer the appearance of its head based on its close relatives, which had relatively complete fossils collected, such as Elacosaurus. The head of this model is made by copying the skull of Elacosaurus but in an enlarged size. This is the only way we currently know. Much research has been done on Elacosaurus, so we know the skeletal structure of its skull well, including the tiny teeth, when it opened its mouth, which is also one of the typical features of herbivorous dinosaurs. This also shows the extraordinary evolutionary root of Therizinosaurus, which had its upper and lower jaws resembling those of herbivorous dinosaurs. Due to the inward depression of the dental bone, such a mouth left cheek traces on the face. Of course, the current anatomy theory says it had no cheeks, but it might still have wide lips wrapping the teeth. Through some structural analysis of its skull, it was found that a beak enclosed the front of the Rosinosaurus mouth. So from this bone you can see that the teeth start here, and the hard beak extends from the part anterior to the teeth. This part was used for feeding to replace the premaxillary teeth. Then, let's talk about the feathers of the Rosinosaurus. After the discovery of these feathered dinosaurs in Western Liaoning, we have a new understanding of their body appearance. Animals in this group are feathered, but which type of feathers exactly? You can see different insights on different restorations. In our restoration, we made its whole body covered with primitive feathers, which have only a shaft and no branches, somewhat similar to those of a cassowary. On its arms, there were no flight feathers that could form the wings. This is because, among the best preserved fossils of Therizinosaurs, Bipiosaurus, who are also closely related to Therizinosaurus, is a good reference. Many feather impressions have been preserved, from head to tail, on many body parts of Bipiosaurus. But there are no flight feathers found, nor more complex feathers, only single shaft primitive feathers. Therefore, we only made the feathers on Therizinosaurus, for limbs similar to today's monkeys or sloths, which are simple but slightly longer. Of course, it makes sense to have no flight feathers, because the flight feathers of dinosaurs are generally connected to their second finger. If they are connected to the second finger of Therizinosaurus, it will considerably affect the use of claws. The claws curved inward greatly, which indicates its finger were very flexible. If feathers were attached here, it would entirely restrict its forelimbs, so it is possible that it had no flight feathers. The distribution of feathers is also restored based on features of the Rizosaurus skeleton. For example, on the tail of some Therizinosaurs has found a pigotile, a structure generally used to attach longer hairs such as tail feathers. We assume that this animal had no flight feathers, and the kind of tail fan like that of Cordypteryx, but it might possess longer feathers to form a mop shape similar to an anteater. When we designed its body color, we made the parts under its arms, and the tail feathers look brighter, resembling today's ostriches. As an upright animal, Thrizosaurus was likely good at displaying itself, and showing off its body color. As for its abdomen, we did not cover it with feathers. Considering that it was a 10 meter long giant dinosaur, there must be bare skin on its body assisting in dissipating heat. At that time, Mongolia in the late Cretaceous was a scorching area, and many dinosaurs that did not have hair, such as colossal sauropods, or gigantic dinosaurs such as Tarbosaurus, Oleoramus, and so on. Even another known fully feathered dinosaur, the Deinocris, who always stayed in the water, had no feathers on its abdomen. Therefore, Therizinosaurus, with no evidence of being an aquatic animal, probably had certa in exposed parts on its body, we designed its abdomen a reddish color similar to that of ostriches today. The underside of its neck is also brightly colored, which is white. About the feathers from the chest to its wings, 
Similar to the feathers of the ostrich wings, we also colored them white to make them more conspicuous. The same goes for the tip of the tail. On the back of Bipiosaurus' neck, very long bristle-like feathers have been found. But when we were making Therizinosaurus, we didn't restore it like that because it lived in a completely different environment from Bipiosaurus, and the two animals were vastly different in body size. Bipiosaurus lived in the cold northeast, and the northeast was also relatively cold during a Cretaceous period, so Bipiosaurus needed more feathers to protect itself, especially the neck. But the habitat of Therizinosaurus requires the adaptation of heat to succession, so we made short hairs on the back of its neck, leaving the front bare, which is consistent with many large modern birds today, especially those that walk on land. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Kinga the Therizinosaurus. Thank you all.